Like Felix on that flank there, gets the gold card next. Maddie secures the kill. So I got into coaching. I was a player where we went to this huge tournament and I got really sick after it while I was still sick. But to try to add something to the team, I helped coach the team. And the players just all thought I did a really great job. And I also felt like I was able to utilize myself really good with it. So it sort of happened by accident. And I sort of felt that I was able to do it good. And it felt really fulfilling. So just random coincidence that I ended up coaching, honestly. I think uh, League of Legends coaching is a bit different from uh, regular sports in terms of the maturity level of the players across the boards. Even though I'm the coach, I'm also helping out as a manager and I'm helping out as a dad or uncle and like making sure that the players are able to take care of themselves. I'm helping cook food, you know, like, like you sort of fill any shoes that you can fill. You try to help all your five players work as best as they can together, but also individually. And then on top of it, there's the game knowledge part. So the level of game knowledge you have has a huge influence on how you're able to coach the game if you are coaching the game. Welcome back, everybody. We are diving into our second game of the day. I'm saying dive all the time because Jake was talking about aquariums in the break, and now I'm just constantly thinking about the sea. Um, Dusty <laughs> versus a monster. Um, obviously, we saw Monster Rugby Gaming yesterday. Uh, we were not hugely impressed, despite them picking up the win. But Dusty is another team that has also, in some way, shape, or form, failed to live up, up to expectations. Uh, I think both of these teams are, are, are kind of teams that have not quite lived up to what we expected from them coming into this uh, tournament. I think it's, uh, again, it's that idea about identity and consistency and kind of what's going to fall first for both these squads. Uh, starting with Monster first, I think the primary takeaway, and Max Lore said it in the interview, is I didn't have a great game. Like, it wasn't it wasn't smooth sailing. And on a team that is really relying on the individual, like, brute strength of a lot of the players, um, Munster are missing a ton of that team play, so you can't have an off day. And then it came down to mid lane Annie pick, which I don't know if we're going to see it banned today. I hope so. I hope he never gets to see that champion again because he was a monster on it. But yeah, monster were just brute forcing the win. Yeah, and also just talking about Dusty too, they had shown a lot of promise despite the issues versus Fnatic. Because up until that point, I thought they were really good at playing the map, especially in the mid to late game, where they're really good, especially Coincidence, is doing a great job at how he wants the wave placed and how that benefits his team. But the early game from Dusty is the biggest question mark for me. But that's kind of a good thing going into Monster Rugby Gaming because I haven't really been sold on their early game either. I feel like these are two teams that definitely has some issues going forward. And it's going to be really interesting to see if they're finally going to overcome their struggle or they're just going to face each other head on with their struggles for a bloodbath. So Goldberg Trundle, uh, or Trundle, Trouble and Excoundrel, uh, just to get you guys to weigh on, like if you say a team is weak in the early game, but strong in the mid late game, that usually tells me that they probably have a key player who understands how to play his wave. Goldberg's insinuating that it's the top laner. But if you're weak in the early game, that usually means that you're either bad laners or you have a, a poor jungler. You're not able to synergize your jungle. So am I getting somewhere close to what it looks like for, uh, for Dusty? I'm ready to say that the bot lane has been uh, not so good in the laning phase. And I feel like they've been not only messing up about how they want the lane to be played, because they have a good idea of it in the beginning. I've seen countless cheater recalls for them. But as soon as they got the item, as soon as they got back to the lane, okay, guys, we're an item ahead. What do we do? I don't know. Let's just keep farming. Let's hope everything pans out. No, because you got Callista. You got to get in there. And I think it comes back to the synergy, especially with the jungler too. Uh, I thought that in the game before Fnatic, Chelm was looking really good. And he was very selfish, especially on some poppy picks there. But it's when this synergy comes together with the bot laner and how the wave is and where the jungle is and how we coordinate that for the proper dive or the proper setting to get the good reset or if you just need some shadowing. That's missing for me. And the same can be said for Monster Rugby Gaming because I feel like Maxlaw, he is a very selfless jungler on that point. And that sometimes open up windows for the enemy team to come in and actually abuse that if they have priority to get more camps because he's using so much time for his laners. Because as we said, Seth Higgs is really one of these individual strong laners from them. So I feel like they are sacrificing a lot of their early game resources to get him going to. 
I feel like I'm just gonna back out, go back to chill because I'm his biggest fan girl from what I can tell. I, I found the Poppy Pig being very, very creative. I thought that he played very well together with Legions when he was on the Twisted Fade. So once they can play this global pressure, once they can alleviate the pressure from the middle and allow Legions to roam away with chill or set up gangs for him as well, I found them to be a really, really strong duo to look at. I felt like Maxlow and Sebex didn't look as strong, but Tilm and Legions do have the potential to sort of push the team forward. The, the, I mean, look, from, from my very sort of limited perspective on this, it, I've always felt like Dusty are a team that uh, got, got, kind of get hyper-focused in things like wave management, hyper-focused in things like uh, farming in the early game, and, and they often don't make the really premeditated rotations for like Rift Herald very early on. They don't like go straight for the early dragons and try to start a dragon soul rolling, for instance. You know, and you compare that to, to Monster and Fnatic, for instance, they're, they're, that's the kind of teams that will make those early plays to try and get those kind of win conditions rolling. Whereas Dusty, they're a little bit less focused on that kind of thing, just from what I've been watching. It's not necessarily a bad thing if you don't have the compensation for fighting the first early game, Drake. If you if you have your asking X in the basket for the mid to late game, it's fine anyway. You don't have to fight every objective. But Dusty has continually been giving up those early objectives, especially the first rotation going in. I think it goes back to that the bot lane is sometimes having some issues and they're not actually in control of the tempo of their own bot lane. So that makes the enemy bot laner have the rotation first and often puts them behind there. Um, but that's just the takeaway I've been seeing from them so far. I think when they're finally feeling comfortable and they're not like something that's completely early game oriented, they are doing fine with sacrificing some neutral objectives. Now, I feel like apart from the 2v2, Monster has been coming out of a hole that they've dug themselves in through individual play. And before it was Sabex, then you had some glimpses of Maxla in as well. But we have to remember that in these moments of doubt, when the shot calling has to come in, having a veteran such as Maxlo making the calls, getting the big plays, you know, Sabex missed a huge Annie ultimate. Four people were there, but he only gets one. And Maxlo gets, you know, that key kick right there to get everyone back onto t -Bus. I feel this is kind of like the veteran quality that a jungle like him brings into the game. It's not necessarily this POW moment, but more like the, the shot calling that will get you there. Well, well, let's let's uh, sort of turn our lens back onto Monster because we've obviously discussed Dusty at rather uh, extensive length. Let's have a look at Monster. Expectations were top three, for sure, alongside Fnatic and Excel. Expectations were that they would flatten the majority of the competition expectations have not been met <laughs> why 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 is it that why is it that they're not flattening why is it that they're not crushing their opposition you know with the the quality of player that they have on their roster i mean before i answer that question the pressure is definitely on Monster Rugby Gaming too, because they were the ones being hyped up. And for good reasons too. We're seeing a name like, like Max Law back again, and even though he haven't been playing a lot, he still brings a brand and name for himself when he's getting into a league like this. We also saw the return of Heva. A lot of people were going on to say that he is the best support this league has right now. And then Unforgiven coming in with a lot of hype too. But I feel like it's just justified for the individual hype because they are good players, but they are not prefer they're not performing as a good team right now. Because a lot of the reasons why they're falling behind are because they are not really up to the same game plan. They're not really going for a synergized play. We sometimes see Unforgiving out of position because he feels like he's ahead and can just run the Nova. So to me, it's a mixture of cockiness sometimes where they feel too overconfident and it's a lack of synergy that's not built up yet. I mean, you see it in the LEC, you know, our top two teams, G2 and Fnatic, have slid down. And I think, you know, it's a, a number of reasons. Well, we're just talking about, you know, cockiness and, and synergy. And, and sometimes you just have a slow start. Sometimes it just takes you a while to get up to speed, but there's plenty of time left. And I think the question for every team is figure out your identity first and perfect your play style. I think a big mistake that a lot of teams make in the ERLs is they try to diversify too quickly. Don't overcomplicate it. Play one play style, play it very well, and you will uh, dominate the amateur scene. And I well, let's, oh, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. I was about to say, I, I really love what Frost just, just brought up because just putting into a team five really great players saying, oh, this is the best mid laner we have in the league, the best support. It doesn't necessarily make them a great team. So I would like to see them in the future sort of gelling together. Yeah, like I said, I think one of the things that we should kind of reflect on is that we are only in week three of the NLC. We have plenty more weeks to go. So we're still going to see a lot of growth and a lot of development for these teams, um, as well as, you know, getting to see them on the rift a bit more as well. I think this is like the fourth game we're actually seeing of, of Monster Rugby Gaming as a whole, right? So let's 
kind of see what happens. We're going to go into pick some bands after this short break, and we'll be able to uh, check out Monster Rugby Gaming versus Dusty actually on the Rift. Okay, guys, I lied to you. We're not going into picks and bands just yet. Uh, we're having a small issues with the client right now, so we should get back on track ASAP. But um, yeah, we, we, we're not currently going into picks and bands, which means you get more time to hear us talk about the two teams. You know, everyone's a winner at the end of the day here. And uh, at the NLC, we, we aim to please. And, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> either Trick or Fanatic, who are still winners, are not going to be in the next game. So not everyone's a winner, I'm just saying. No, someone's got someone's got to lose this. Uh, someone's got to lose this uh, this game. So, so I've got some questions. Uh, you guys are much more comfortable with the teams. We are about to go into draft. I usually like when we're at the LEC, we usually tee up like 
What are really important picks? Who's like a really key player? So if you had to just define the key player for both of these teams and like their key pick, what's like the first thing that jumps to mind? Okay, so basically I'm gonna take the easy wait, wait, one. Wait, wait, Okay. You are limited to one paragraph, good sir. <laughs> Uh, let me give me like one minute to cut that all down to one sentence. Uh, oh no, he's got he's got pages in there. Uh, GP, hundred percent pick way coincidence. Very good. At, okay, I don't have to do anything. It's fine. Take it away. I'm gonna think about not parents. I yeah. Apparently they already went into picks and bands. They didn't. I tell was just gonna us, say uh, Twisted Fate <laughs> because Dusty love to play around the their global. You should use yeah. Dan Plank. I feel like um, mostly Twisted Fate here, especially because Unforgiven likes to play that Kalista. I think it's a mm. key ban from Blue Side as well because if they want to grab the Kalista as a first pick, then instantly you've got on the red side Dusty grabbing away the Twisted Fate and then having the threat down ball. Yeah, I was just about to follow up on that trouble. Really good point. Um, Monster have shown that they're one of the teams that have the confidence to play the, the Callista. And so I expect that if it gets through here, I mean, you banned Varus from uh, from blue side, so you definitely won't don't want that Varus. I think they want to run that kill Callista Nautilus bot lane. What yeah, the dust are going to do it? They're going to give it. <laughs> it's going to be the Syndra here. So if the Callista goes through here, I'm expecting Astro. If I mean yeah, sorry. If it if it been picked here, because Unforgiven half shown that he's willing to play it. I oh, think I like bear. Are you still being hovered? We don't know yet. But I, 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 to get to my point, I think that we're looking at some Ashral picks from Dust yet. They didn't have much success with the Callista, so I think they would much rather go with the uh, with the Aphelios or the Ashral or that late game insurance rather than throwing it all into the early game. And then we talked about the uh, the mid lane too that they were happy to play TF. They still have a Seer for Blind Pick. They still have Galio if they want more to go with that. But it's looking like we're going back to some OG team from the first week here with some Graves. So in my discussions with LEC pros, a lot of people are really split over Volibear. Some teams, some pros find that he's like absolutely busted and broken. He's a flex pick. Uh, he can deny a lot of ADCs that are powerful in the meta because he just becomes a super tank into the late game. And some LEC pros are like, that champion is absolutely boosted. Why would you ever first pick it? Because you can easily kite him out. So I think it's really interesting to see such a high priority on Volibear. And I guess time will really tell if his kit is overtuned or he is busted, but Personally, I feel that Volibear is really easy kiteable on a lot of champions that are viable in the meta right now, like the Trundles, like the Kales. I'm actually on the same page right here. I find his um, closing gap set not being uh, doable enough. He can't stick necessarily onto champions. Sure, he can play the big beefy wall in front of the ADC and sort of scare them away, but that's not necessarily enough when there's champions in there like Orn or Malkai who can do his job, but better because they also have hard engage. Now we're finally seeing that Callista coming through as expected. I didn't feel like not Dusty was going to have priority in that. Now Seth is out of the picture. Same goes with Thresh. So Nautilus can be up for it if you want to go with that engage to it as well. And then it's most likely going to be the AD carry that's going to be picked by Legion here for Jack Spectra. I also going to expect that the AD pool and support pool is going to be thinned out here. Ooh, I like this. Okay, yeah, the pivot for an untraditional bot lane to try to survive the all-in potential here. Um, I'm glad that you bright, uh, bring up like the Callista of the Nautilus. I think that there could have been a cool adaptation here that if you actually went Azir, yeah, you lose the Nautilus power, but I still think that there's some viable options for support that you could go to even after the secondary bans. And if you go for the Azir, you win push priority against the Orianna early on into the laning phase for the first couple of levels, and you can really slow <laughs> down Graves taking over the jungle, so. There it is, the Animan. I was going to say, it's gone through so far. Uh, so they must have been com felt comfortable, at least for the first three picks that decided Dusty. But now they're not opting into it. You don't want to deal with Sepex, Annie. GP is being removed from coincidence, as I said. 100% pick, uh, pick so far. Usually as a, a fourth pick, not necessary here, as they could go for the support instead. Uh, so I think uh, they don't necessarily have to deal with the weak side GP here. I think it actually would have benefited uh, Monster Rock be Martin to the Rock be gaming a bit more. I'm interested to see if they're just going to ban out his Soy, just not to deal with Sepex Soy either, and they just completely remove the comfort. The thing here, we have talked about, you know, Polish mid laners and how they do love to play their Aziz and their Zoe's. And I've seen Sepex and Zoe, and I really like Zoe. That's that's why I've put her in my illegal list. I don't see her enough just because Orianna feels like she's overshadowing her a little bit with the ability to shield and engage as well with the ball. But I do find like maybe in this composition, Zoe would not necessarily be the best because you've got all these 
displacement coming in from Dusty with the graves as well. All these shields such as um, the Oriana shield and the heels coming in from the from the Senna that I'm not sure that just pure wave clear would be enough for Sebex here. I think one of the issues of Dusty's comp is the low range on it. Right now with the first three champions, like depending what their ADC is, it really is a Graves comp. Like you can keep him healed up with the Senna, you have the true great, he can be really uh, tanky, and then you also have shield from Orianna and like great zone control there. Like don't get me wrong, or you can do damage, but like with the Braum on top of it, it's a very low range comp. I think an Azir would be really solid here. I don't know how comfortable this mid laner is on playing it, but right now you have a relatively short range comp in the Graves comp and then relatively short range with Callista. Like, obviously, the Volley Bear can run and kind of zone you away. I think if you just stack some more range onto this, like an Azir, you can create a ton of problems for how Dusty want to coordinate these team fights. Tristana also would work. Low range. She can outrange that. I still think Azir was better, but I'll accept it. <laughs> So yeah. they're going back to the traditional Senna ADC here because she was recently buffed. Whenever Pick she's Malphite. the one CSing, she gets an 8, 8 point something percent on getting a soul back. So it sort of balances the fact that whether she's CSing or not, she's still able to get both the gold and the souls right now. So I just want to see how the, the traditional Senna is going to work. Wow, coincidence, back on a carry. And already, I think we can see that some team is going straight for that early game. We're talking Elise, Callista here, getting in with that Tristana, Tristana too. So we're actually looking at Monster Rock V Gaming, who's looking to be proactive in the is early game. Is that tricked? Game. Disguised? Maybe, who knows? Maybe. We'll see. Well, I also like that Dusty finally went on to some late game here. You got Cheem, who can be a menace in the early game with his graves. I actually don't know how that fares into the Elise or how they their, their pathing crosses with each other. But we got Fiora, who's going to outscale on side lane. We got Senna, who's going to outscale later with the Callista. We got Orianna, who's always that big shockwave. Question is if Dusty can contain themselves in the early game, because as we did mention, they have been struggling there. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, observing this from the, the very uh, back of the, the, the draft, I, I, I feel like Fiora is a bit disjointed with the rest of the Dusty composition, but I, I think there have been questions about um, Monster Ruby Games' ability to capitalize and run with the early game. Well, this is the, the game that they have got to prove they can do it. This is the game where they can't let slip what they did in the Annie Lee Sin game. If they let slip, I don't think they get back into this game. Um, look, the casters are ready. Let's hand it over to them. Let's jump into game. Thank you very much, Excandrel. Hello, welcome back to the Caster Desk as we're getting ready for game number two. Now, Orcs, there is a lot to talk about here. There's a lot of kind of new picks, maybe not new picks, but, you know, I feel like a lot of curveballs were thrown in this pick band. So I think that's fair to say. So what do we want to talk about here? Obviously, we've got Coincidence back on a carry in the top lane on the Fiora versus Shikari. How do you feel this is going? I feel like it's an interesting thing because last split in the Nordics, we saw a lot of the split push threat from Quinston. He was playing things like the Yorick where he'd like to be a threat in the side lane. And this is a little bit of a return to that, but I feel like it doesn't necessarily fit in with the rest of the composition. I think you go into the late game and you already come out ahead. I don't think you necessarily needed the Fiora to kind of secure things for you, but maybe this is something specifically he's prepared for the Volley Bear in terms of a way he can counteract it. We'll have to see how that develops. Ultimately, I feel like Volley Bear is not going to get too much attention. Shikari does tend to lean on the weak side. And right now, Max Thor is looking at a Callista Nautilus bot lane and Tristana mid. And that's where he really wants to play around. And maybe this Fiora is trying to bait him into putting some attention top lane, spreading out the pressure and giving uh, the mid and bot of Dusty some room to breathe. Well, we've loaded through onto the Summoner's Rift for our second game of the day. It's Munster versus Dusty. Quite a few questions have been raised about Munster in the last few weeks. Hasn't really had the performance that we expected coming into this league. We thought that Munster were going to be one of our top teams. We knew at the least, but we thought they'd be in the top two in Group B. And so far, they've really not proven that point. They're not doing particularly great. They're currently third in the standings, two and one. Tricked, obviously, Upsetting the apple cart a little bit, going 3-0. Their game with Fnatic is up after this. So if Monster can get a win, it means they can keep competitive and then tie with the loser of the next game in Group B. Oh, we're seeing an invade here. And this is a super strong level one. Graze, Braum, Senna, really powerful. And they're looking to challenge. Yeah. I'm going to step up here, Chum. 
Makes his way forward. They do get the hook and the snare down. That's going to be Max Law hitting level two, though, as Heaver flashes away from the concussive blows. They get the stun onto the spider. And now Unforgiven is trying to put that damage into the members of Dusty as they get another free man. Sarah Fittle is low, but Fittle gets away alive. Here comes Sebex, though. He's not going to try and mop open this fight. First Bloods would have been picked up, but the trades are going out everywhere. A one for one at the end of the day. Chen will go down, but so will Heaver. Yeah, so it ends up being pretty favorably going over the side of Munster. Just the fact that Chium dies, doesn't manage to get his buff. We saw a similar situation yesterday, I believe, or at least maybe last week, where there was an invade that came in, one of the junglers dies, and the other ends up getting a massive lead because they also picked up the buff. Max Law now level two. He's going to pick up his blue buff buff and get that level three and Chilm only just starting on his red buff makes things really rough for him but it has given advantage to the bot lane of uh, Dusty because Unforgiven went for a reset and Heaver did die it means they were able to get to lane first so a lot to unpack there ultimately I gotta respect the confidence from Munster they had the spears built up on the red buff they had the smite from Max Law that made it able to secure it and then they continued to fight as much as Senna, Graves, Braum are very powerful I think Callista and Nautilus, both good tools in the level ones. And you see why when we first got the Senna in the game, Senna used to be tied up with this Braum. She can proc the concussive blows actually very effectively. Her Q will activate one of those stacks on the concussive blows. So all it takes is a Q auto from Braum and a Q auto from Senna. And someone's getting stunned. Along with that, the Senna also having snares for herself. There's a lot of CC in this lane. And Braum obviously makes it a little bit safer for the Senna if people start to jump onto her without Unbreakable. So kind of a flashback to when we first had Senna actually get released and when we see you see a lot more of the carry Senna bot side. Yeah, with the 8% 8 soul rate on on when you CS a minion, seems like she is going to be in a much better spot with regards to going AD carry Senna. So interesting Ooh. to see how this pans out. Gang coming in. Yeah, Maxwell will take a little something here. Throws out the cocoon, does actually connect it. Fizzle getting chunked out. And Unforgiven will just get himself an easy kill. Fantastic gang by Max Law. Kind of alleviating some of the pressure that was building up in this bot side. And it's because the summoners are burnt in the level one. You know that without summoners, you know that a gank, as long as you hit the skill shots, will be a 100% kill. And ultimately, you're playing towards this Callista, and it's the goal for this draft from Munster. You want priority mid from the Tristana. You want Tristana to be able to threaten the Oriana. And you want to play heavily around this bot lane, and that's what they're achieving. Munster. Really drafting for the early pressure. And so far, it's been a pretty good start. Sebex so looking just to shove this wave in here. You can see Maxwell's waiting in the wings in case anything looks to break out, but he realizes Sebex should be nice and okay now. It's been a while since we've seen Tristan in mid, and originally it was brought out as a good counter in the Corky Azir meta. And obviously, we've slipped back to a similar meta to that with Oriana as well as another champion that's oh. uh, cropped up. But. Tristana got buffs onto her explosive charge. She got the same buffs as all the AD carries got, so she is actually in a good spot. Oh, no. Legion, oh, no! Legion just got caught out. Sebex should be the one to pick that kill with a pop. Max Law, actually, with the spider links, will secure it. I really love that, though. They shoved in the lane with the Tristana. Obviously, she's very effective at pushing in the ways with the passive on the E. Able just to kind of shove in the lane, move over with this jungle mid synergy. We talk about it so much, but that was it working into just perfect effect there. I mean, I'm just not sure what Legions was going for there. You have to respect the fact that lean and bot potentially go for a dive. If you want to walk over and assist, sure, but don't just walk into them because realistically, Chilm was in the vicinity. I don't think they would have been able to get the dive off. I think, you know, Munster were very much aware of that, but you handed them a freebie there. All right, with that, BF's all got picked up, picked up for Sebex. Unforgiven now sitting on that bilge water cutlass. Top lane, Shikari's got that Bramble Vest. He's building to deal with coincidence in the lane. Trying to nice oh, some of that damage. That's actually such big brain from Heaver. He's spamming emotes when he's in the brush. If Dusty responds with an emote, then he knows oh. that they can see him. <laughs> and now he knows that's he's going to go for the Hex Flash onto Jack Spectra. The emote spam works. Looking for that hook, they do find the cocoon onto Fittle. Jack Spectra does look to try and bail them out, and it actually looks like once they're not going to get anything here, bot side. Maxwell putting a lot of attention in. And now Sevex, level six, actually looking to see if he can find something onto Jack Spectra. Not going to get it, however. He's going to back off. Not into a Braum. If he has Unbreakable, it's very hard for you to proc your bomb and be able to jump out again. 
It's a bit too risky. Heaver unfortunately hit a minion with the hook there, so they were able to get away. And the exhaust at the end was a nice timing from Fiddle just to stop Unforgiven from going for the rend. You now see that the flashes burnt on that level one are up and available. So Maxwell doing a good job playing around those summoner timers to punish. That's something I criticized him for in the last game they had yesterday, where we saw them burn a flash mid in the Oriana, and they didn't return gank, gank until it was up again. Here with those summoners down, they're really heavily putting the pressure down. And now even more so, this is what I want to see. I think they got the play, but once again, Max Law is here. Fittle getting caught out. They do get the stun underneath the tower. Fittle needs to keep running. Kiva very, very low. Jack Spectre. Also exceptionally low. The wave's starting There's to no crash. And Devex is actually coming in. Dusty, they're just isolated underneath this tower. Maxlaw's going to be able to go for this dive. He is on the Elise. He can reset nice and easily. They get the snare up on time for Given. Heaver is in for a lot of hurt. Sevex comes in for the pop. Fittle's going to fall as well. It's a double kill for Maxlaw and Legions. Level 7 will actually force the flash from Unforgiven. The tower shot's going to be enough, and Legions finds himself a shutdown. Oh, they're going to go for the redive, maybe? I think they can do this. They have so much capability just to reset this. Legions is just going to fall. Max Law 4 0 and 2 on the Elise at 7 minutes. This is just a clinically clean game by Monster. It was a bit slow at one point, but ultimately they didn't go too fast. They didn't overforce. Monster waited for reinforcements and they managed to get so many kills out of that and deny so much farm. And remember, with the Senna being the farming champion, not only do you miss the CS, you also miss those souls that are so valuable. So a big hit to the bot lane of Dusty and Dusty in general. And Chilm will go to the other side of the map to start this Herald. They are moving up to respond. I think he should be able to get this slow. in time. It's half health. Uh, Maxwell's making his way over. I think Maxwell can contest not have this. Smite. He doesn't have smite though. Chilm does have smite. But Max Lord may just go for the kill. He has a complete Chill jungle it. item, while Chelm doesn't. Chelm's actually just going to get forced out, and Max Lord takes a free Rift Herald. Oh, and he just ends up getting everything. And Chilm, it was a nice attempt to go for that, and uh -oh. he wasn't aware. Oh, they're the jumping in. Legions have to be very, very careful. Great Unbreakable, though. Will save the day. And I'm glad to see Heaver actually roam up here. I'm not going to get the opportunity to speak, because Coincidence is getting Tower Dove. Tower gets turned off by Shikari. The flash forward and Coincidence gonna get repelled onto and Max Law secures the kill. Now Chelm looking to see some to see if he can find a kill onto the spider, but Max Law able to flash away. Chelm does have that collateral damage and it will just chunk him out and force him away from the tower. Yeah again nice play there. Shikari jumps in with the old baits out of a past flash done and the follow-up is there and Max Law. I mean if you ever wanted a master class in the jungle this game he's just been on fire. We don't see as much gank heavy junglers in the current meta with the leaning on invading, contesting camps and farming with the likes of the Graves. This is really a callback to the meta previously where things like Elise were just dominant in their gank impression. Max Law. Jack actually Go what can do. There. Death Charge is going to be an Unforgiven has the ultimate to try and reset tower aggro if Heaver gets too low. The concussive blows come in. Unforgiven yo-yos him back. And now Jack Spectra actually might just get popped. They do find the snare on, but Stevex hops over the wall. Now he's looking just to mop up this fight. Jack Spectra does hit six in time, but he gets bopped back, and that throws the ultimate down. Dusty going to lose one already. Make it a second. Ooh. Heaver keeps getting away with a criminal amount of health. Oh, and Stevex takes the aggro. That was so close there. Really nicely played, though. And this is just Munster playing to their strengths. They know they can challenge in the lane. They drafted for it. And they are dominating so far this game. 4,500 gold lead, just shy of it. And we have a 5-0 Elise with the jungle lighting completed. I think Unforgiven should be able to get a Blade of the Moon King here. And Sebek's going to be close to getting an item. Probably after a few more minutes. But just ultimately, really strong early play from Munster now. Dusty getting a bit concerned about the pace of this early game. They want to take a dragon here and remove the threat of a later soul, especially as it is a cloud dragon. That means a higher chance of a dragon like an infernal or an ocean being later. Oh, one second to come in, gets himself the cocoon onto Fittle. Remember, he's got that full item. He's doing a lot of damage. He's able to secure oh, the dragon. Too. And now Stevex hops in forwards. Fittle gets the shield as he tries to run away. Legions, a great dissonance to slow them down. And Fittle is going to get out alive. But Max Law is just ruining Chilm's day. He's not giving him anything. He's not letting him take... Oh, oh Vixen, look for an engage. Legions has to be careful. The depth charge not quite available, but they do find himself a dredge line into the cocoon. Bye-bye, Legions. Max Law, 6-0-3 on the Spider Lady. This is very much an Elise Snowball right now.
And this feels like what Munster have been trying to do consistently. They put Heaver back on the Nautilus. No more of that Yumi, which I really did not enjoy seeing. They got their Callista. They're applying the Elite Pressure. And consider it's against Dusty, a team who we have praised. And as much as they're not top of the group, they had good moments. And they're just being devastated here. Shikari's going for a bit of a 1v1 versus Coincidence here. Shikari will be able to walk away with it. Peril gets summoned out in the mid lane. I'm so glad to see Heva unlocked and able to rotate around the map. He does find a hook off the Fizzle and a depth charge. Charge from the Herald comes out, and that's just going to be some plates gifted over to the Munster group. The mid tower really low as well, so putting it in a bit of a precarious position. Jack, that bomb goes off. That does so much damage to Jack as well. Legion's dealing with bot lane. The yo-yo's been summoned, and Legion's is going to try and dodge away. Heva flashes forward, gets himself all the CC. Legions, this is just horrible to watch. I mean, so much praise to Maxlaw here, but also Heaver unlocked on this Nautilus, paired up with the Callista, and just able to consistently apply this pressure. This is what I wanted to see from Munster. This was meeting our expectations when we came into the split. 7,600 gold up at 12 minutes. This is just devastating. This is and just we can look, at, look at the individual bullying. gold differences. Almost 3,000 between 80 carries. Mids about 1,500. Jungle is 2,000 over a Graves who normally can farm up a Storm. It's just great for Munster. All right, let's let's take a, a step back because obviously it's it's very Munster favored right now. What are Dusty's chances? What do they need to do to? increase those chances of pulling this back time they need time oh looking for an engage here on a heaver yeah heaver able to oh, goodbye. pop the blast going oh he's out cool they need time they need to scale up they need to hit their spikes they need the the goal difference to be less relevant if you are this far ahead nine thousand ahead of 13 minutes is i mean it's game over right but if you maintain this gold lead or claw it back a bit and it gets to 35 minutes uh, then you have a chance uh, but for now the discrepancy is just completely enormous and it just becomes difficult because monster aren't letting up but you need to try and find picks like this are huge yeah unforgiving's gonna get taken out the teleport's getting used and shikari's gonna go one versus three this guy splits the shields on as he does get snared up and stunned up monster unable to attack their ad carry maybe a little greedy by unforgiving to be so pushed up on his own that's good. The gold influx from the bounties as well will be a massive factor. We've got one of Max Lon Sebek still, so being able to pick those up will be big. And it's just every time you find a pick, you get gold in the pocket and you stall out the game and the need to do that consistently. There is a, a stage later on where I can see Dusty coming out ahead, but with the gold discrepancy now and... Oh, oh no. He was going to tank this tower to make sure Max I mean, gets out. This is a problem. As you get one pick, you lose three members. It Legions like... is having such a rough game. Yeah. I mean, from that first time he got caught out rotating, they've just continuously punished him. And we've seen a meta where traditionally things like Oriana are seen as a safe blind. It's a pick that you can take and be comfortable and not be challenged. And they have challenged that. They've shaken it up and they've gone, we're going to crush you in this early game. And that has been the game so far. And we've talked about how if they get to the later stages, Dust Dusty should be confident. It's hard to see that happening with how the things are now. Yeah, with an 8,000 gold lead over to the side of Munster, you can see just the chasm in between these teams. The item difference is massive. Stormraiser and a BF sword into the Archangels. If you look on the bot side, it's a serrated Dirk and a Mana Munit into a Blade of the Ruin King Zeal. A Blade of the Ruin King costs so much more than a Mana Munit. It's actually massive difference between Unforgiven and Jack Spectre. A two-level difference in both mid and bot side as well. you got to remember, though, that it is a sort of scaling item, the Man Immune. It'll offer more attack damage later on. So there is that aspect to it. But for the immediate power, absolutely, the Blade Rune King comes out ahead. Now, see Max Law leaning down towards his dragon. Again, Shield trying to go for the cross map play, trying to get that Herald in his pocket. More as a denial than anything, I feel. The Max just throws the ulti out. Disengage Chilm. Chilm die might die to the Ignite here. Just about the survives. Meanwhile, they're going for a dive into the top side. Oh, he is popped by Max Lord. Meanwhile, over in the top line, Chilm will take himself a depth charge to the face. Fistle takes a fair amount of damage from him given. Monster are able to push them away and focus on that tower. 
Man, coincidence got popped. Yeah. Didn't really have a chance to outplay that. And it sort of begs the question, did you need a Fiora? Did you need a scaling top laner to look to be a split push threat? I'm not so sure. And when we saw last season, coincidence kind of be put in a oh, situation okay. like this, it was on the, the likes of the Yorick, like a split pusher. And, and he wasn't the one getting stomped. Obviously, the rest of his team were struggling in some of the games that he was able to pull back. But he as well is also having an incredibly hard time. He can't step up. And that, like, coincidence backdoor that I, I would think of when I think of him on a carry top laner just feels so far from him being able to achieve right now. And yeah, and that's the thing is that when the rest of the, lap, rest of the map loses, it has a knock-on effect to you. And things just got even worse. The soul has been revealed. It's an ocean soul. So arguably the best one to pick up in terms of what it offers your team. It means that there's even more pressure on Dusty now because two more dragons, Munster will have that. And then the game really feels unwinnable. Even if they hit the scaling point, it's just going to be such a long time before they can be relevant. Herald's now picked up and I mean look at the items. We now have a Runans for Unforgiven, Medjai's and the Oblivion Orb for Max Law. Sebex has the BF sword with the uh, Storm Razor. And it's just it feels very very difficult. We need Munster to overstep, we need picks from Dusty, and we just need time if Dusty are gonna have a chance. Because right now, almost 10,000 gold down, it's looking dire. I'm curious what you... I might not even get a chance to speak about this. The hook lands onto Coincidence. Oh, nice. nice. Great repost, repost though, to make sure that he gets away. And now it actually looks like Dusty are going for a collapse. Unforgiven. Going to take the ultimate to the face. Heba is just going to have to leave him for dead. That's a nice pick. Meanwhile, sort of play we won, Herald yeah, gets Harold. double in top lane. Everyone's on the opposite side. Seven will probably get an there. inhib here. I mean, he'll get the charge off of the inhib. I don't know if he'll stay for it, but Tristan are very fast to take these towers. I mean, no one else is about. Shikari's looking for the play. They've got Maxwell coming in on the flank, and Coincidence looking to dive in. The shield comes through from the railgun, and Maxwell finds himself a quick pickoff onto the back line. Great collateral damage, but Coincidence is already low, and Maxwell looking to mop up. It's now a two versus two, as Maxwell's getting chunked. Remember, he's worth a grand, so Chilm can find this. There's so much gold in his pocket. Shikari's the only one left standing in this fight, as he's being chased down by Jack Spencer and Chilm, able to dodge away on the snare. The inhib did fall in the top lane in the middle of that fight, Man, this is so, so crazy. And something we talked about in the desk was how Sebex was the most consistent member on this roster. And I think we're seeing that a little bit here. Unforgiven Heaver and Maxwell all over Step. And we're going to see this in the replay. And why are you taking this fight? You know, Unforgiven's already dead. You don't have the safety net there for Heaver. And as much as a lot of burst, a lot of damage available to Maxlaw, you don't have the extended fight advantage. And when more members come in, when Chilm and you see Jack Spectre there are taking these longer trades, they're actually able to win out, and you're with so much more than the enemy team with those huge bounties, and Maxwell with the Medjai, so just a bit of a misplay, but Unforgiven just steal away the red with some Ren stacks. But I feel like this game, it was a just a monstrous early game from Munster, really well Absolutely. played, and then it's kind of got a little bit messy, almost like they're getting cocky. Sebex has just been a monster in the side lane, so credit to him keeping that up. The rest of the team is just kind of coming in a bit too hard. Oh, Chelm is just getting minced by Stebex, but they do place the wall down. They go for the buster shot. Stebex is just going to flash in and find himself the kill. Fittle, it's a big crit from Stebex. It does send him packing. That's a nice and easy quick kill there in the top side. I want to ask you what you think this means for the rest of the of Group B. Because obviously, Tricks and Fnatic sitting at the top. They're playing up after this game, but Munster currently in third, Dusty in fourth. I don't know if we'll get a chance to talk about this because Munster want to do nothing but fight this game. They land their hook. Legions is just going to get cut down by Sebex on the back line. The Shockwave does land, but he do find the kill. Yo-Yo being summoned. Coincidence gets quashed, and it's a double kill onto Sebex. This is just going to be the turrets going down. This is just going to be the game. It was clean as that. Munster looks so, so good in this game. Maybe answering some of the questions we had about them. Munster take the game in 21 minutes. So, a little bit messy, I'll be honest. Um, but in the end, ultimately, very convincing. There was moments where I was questioning it in the mid game, but the early game was just so good from the side of Munster. They had a win condition, they met it. Maxwell was an absolute monster. And it kind of 
for me, it raises questions about the consistency of Munster. It also raises questions about, is this them finding their form, finding what strategy works for them? I have to say that it's definitely a good look for them. And considering they are just above Dusty on the rankings, this isn't like them stomping Eminem, where we disregarded it because Eminem have been stomped by everyone. This is a showing that Munster can sort of live up to the expectations we set before the start of the season. Now, they've already lost to Fnatic, they will have a chance to face down Tricked, and that will really be the big test for them if they can handle Tricked. And where do we have Tricked in their expectations in after their next game against Fnatic? Because right now I'm looking at these top three teams in that group, and I'm thinking all three of them have had some really solid performances now. Yeah, it was a good turnaround there for Munster, kind of get, finding the form that we expected from them coming into the NLC, but they weren't able to really hit that mark so far. But that was definitely the most convincing Munster game that I have seen so far here in the NLC. Now, guys, we are going to cut to a quick break. And when we're back, we'll let our analyst desk break that down a little bit more. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you after this break. Ain't a mistake, I've been here before. All my body is aching, shaking to the core. Wherever you go is a heaven, 724. Now don't come be misbehaving, but I'm craving a little more. Mm, can't keep my thoughts inside, don't want no place to hide. Can't get you off my mind, all night and day. You always played it cool Oh, but I ain't no fool I know you feel it too So what do you say? Well, I'ma give it a try I'm mistaken, I'm taken with you Oh, my body is aching, awaken anew Oh, I think I'm in heaven, in heaven is true I don't go abuse behaving, but I'm caving over you Oh, can't keep my thoughts inside Don't want no place to hide Can't get you off my mind all night and day yeah, always playing it cool Oh, but I ain't no fool I know you feel it too So what do you say? Well, I'ma give it a try Think about every time, every time you look my way. I wanna make the most of this high, most of this high. Uh, I wanna talk about every time, every time you wanted to stay. I wanna make the most of this night. So what do you say? Why don't we give it a try? Yeah, it's the feeling. 
So, um, do you remember when I said we need to see Monster dominate the early game? I think I did. Kind of did. Kind of did. Your wish that uh, command, Excandrel. <laughs> I mean, Frost said, was this game over at four minutes or six minutes? Frost, have you, co- have you come to a conclusion yet? <laughs> um, I think it was more competitive to have that debate than the game that we actually watched on screen. That was one of the biggest shellackings I've ever seen. Um, I know, Goldberg, you were super upset with that level one invade. And before I let you take it away, I just want to give mad props to Maxlor. I know you guys don't give out like uh, poggers in this uh, this stream, but my my player of the game definitely was Maxlor. That was a clinical Elise performance. That's how you snowball on a champ. Yeah, I, I think Maxlor did great, but if I can rant about that early game. Can, let it go. To? Go I'm on, get it to, out. I need to get it out of my system. We're talking about some early game issues with the, the, with this Dusty roster. And I was glad to see that they went for the scaling. Now, they have one cheeky little idea of doing an invade. Okay, so let's take that. First step, three people. We want to go invade the red buff. Oh, what's happening? Fiddle is going the wrong way as a Braum who needs to be <laughs> engaged. Okay, okay, sorry. So he's going to come in late. Okay, he's late to the fight. And now they are going to be improved. Uh, they 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 are going to be faster to collapse on it from Monster Rock Beast Gaming site. Sephex get the move first. The cooldown reduction on abilities are not paired well enough off because Fittle is late for making a mistake. He's literally the mistake is right clicking wrongly on the map. <laughs> like ah, Molden. Yeah, it's okay. I really I really am because I I really thought that they finally had the idea going, but they collapsed everywhere on the map. And after that happened, you know what? They had used all their summoner spells, so that made it really easy for Unforgiven, who got the first bot as Callista, to come back into the lane. And what do you know? We have Nautilus Callista against an enemy bot lane with no flash. Let's just call Max Law down here. Let's just make it make it easy for herself. And my favorite part was when Heva was throwing up the sad B and the Teemo thumbs up as you just slowly watched the wave move away from Senna and Braun. <laughs> and you're just like, it's over. That wave's never coming back to you. And as soon as it does, guess what? Max was going to be there. And as soon as it crashes under your tower, guess what? Tristana's jumping on top of you. That was like, that was a nightmare scenario. I've never seen a game decided so quickly. That was a scrim. That was FF at 10 minutes. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about uh, that, the fact that yeah, yeah. They, they shouldn't be that heartbroken over a game that was basically dictated by the level one invade. This is something that Dusty does textbook. Every time there is a level one, they will do a cheeky late invade towards the red buff uh, most of all times. And even though I know Gulbog is molding about the fetal path, I think the most int play there was starting W onto the Senna. The Q could proc the concussive blows, um, the passive from the Brom onto a champion that could have flashed away as we saw and also provide the heal for some extra sustain to try and take these battles. And it, it was, I, th I think it was a, a misfortune on top of a misfortune that happened there on the level one uh, invade. Guys, um, like, like I said, there's, it's one of those games where you feel like you could just switch your brain off in terms of analysis after like eight minutes <laughs> because <laughs> it, it, it genuinely felt like the game was over from that point onwards. Um, I, I have got Shikari waiting for an interview. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview Shikari first and I'll come back to you guys and we'll chat a little bit more about this. Um, hey, Shikari, how are you? I am great. Thanks for having me. No, no worries. I'm glad to have you here. Actually, nice to see you again. I don't think I've spoken to you for for a little while. But um, uh, first of all, that that monster was very different to the monster that we saw yesterday. Um, there was complete transformation in, 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 in probably the most dominant game we've had in the NLC to date. Um, what's stopping us from seeing that monster every game? <clears throat> um, honestly, I think it's just uh, issues of consistency. Like yesterday, um, there was very little teamwork and everyone was just in their own little world. And today you saw it like everyone was on the same page and the game was just over after like four minutes. Like, yeah. Is, is that a draft thing or is that just being in the right mentality for the game? Because definitely the draft looked like it worked well together today. Um, do, you, do you think it's if getting on the right picks or is you think it's just uh, just kind of like having the right mentality actually stepping onto the game? I think it's purely mentality. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I actually, I remember Orcs told me that sometimes like consistency is something that you're working on in scrims. Is that something that um, is like a main goal for you? Like if you were to improve one thing for your for your sort of um, 
team is it just the, just getting consistent in scrims and translating that to stage yes like uh the peak level of this team is incredibly high it's just that um sometimes there'll be a lot of in and if we just reduce the amount of in we'll be an insane team i think <laughs> and actually for you uh you've, you've been probably one of the best performing top laners of uk lc or just uk history uh, you know alongside rifty i think when everyone thinks of top laners in the uk it's always going to be shikari and rifty is sort of the, the, the top end of the table uh, are we ever going get, get to get to see carry shikari are we ever going to get to see non-weak side shikari in in monster um well i think so uh this game was we were, we were planning to play top side and then the game just exploded. <laughs> so um, I think we will see that side of Shikari, but it just depends on like what happens. Yeah, of course. Uh, but honestly, I think you're still one of the most consistent top lanes we have. And obviously, uh, hoping to see you succeed just as well as you did on Fnatic in the past. Uh, congratulations. And hopefully we see more of this monster. Thank you. I just, you know, what, every time I talk to Shikari, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like filled with wholesome vibes. He's like the, he's like the yeah. most wholesome, he's like the most wholesome guy I know. Um, so, uh, I, I obviously, you guys wanted to round out on on, on this uh, on this game. Uh, anything that you want to want to close on? Just sort of looking back at basically what was the biggest stomp of the NLC so far? Yeah, just really quickly. I'm really glad that he's already now seeing that it's a mentality thing. It's nothing about the draft. It's purely about the playstyle and their their the preparation for the game, going into it, and how they're playing. Like yesterday, how he's saying they're in their own little world because we could see that in the game. And I'm just happy that we finally saw them stomp a game that we really wanted. It solidified themselves as we are a strong team. And I needed that yeah. from Monster. Yeah, I think we all did, to be honest with you. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break. Uh, it feels like we've only just been on a break, but obviously that game was so short. Uh, when we come back, we'll be diving into Fnatic versus Tricked. Going to be one of the most exciting games of the day. We'll see you soon.